Hello and welcome to another module in this online course strategy and introduction to game theory. Today let us look at another very interesting game or rather very colorful game which is also termed as the battle of the battle of sex as it has a rather very colorful title as we are going to see from its description uh, uh, shortly. And the game is as follows, the game involves is between a couple presume this such as for instance a wife and a husband or a boy and a girl who are deciding on the plans for an evening and they have two options, they can either choose to go for a game, let us say a game of cricket which I am going to represent by C which the boy prefers or they can either choose to go for a movie just to make it a little bit colorful let me denote it let us say the movie is it is a Harry Potter movie which I am going to represent by H. So, there is a couple with let us say a boy and a girl who are trying to choose or to are trying to decide to choose between watching a game of cricket or a movie that is Harry Potter. And uh, we are trying to model the strategic interaction between this couple or the behavior of uh, a, a couple in this kind of a uh, this kind of a game where they try to make a choice between uh, watching a game or a movie. And uh, therefore, the game table for this game can be drawn as follows. I have a two player game between a boy and a girl. I am going to denote the preferences of the boy who is player 1 and girl who is player 2 and both can choose between watching a game of cricket or watching a movie and the girl similarly can choose cricket or a movie. And if both choose, if the game proceeds as follows, if both choose different things for instance the boy chooses to watch cricket and the girl chooses to watch movie or if the girl chooses to watch the game of cricket and the boy chooses to watch the movie uh, uh, and uh, both of them are doing things separately, if both of them are doing things separately then the point of the evenings is lost. So, therefore, each gets a payoff of 0. So, if both of them are doing different things that is they are doing things separately then both get a payoff of 0. On the other hand if both of them decide to do something together for instance the boy and girl agree to watch either a game of cricket or a game of movie if both of them decide to watch a game of cricket together then the boy gets a payoff of 10 and the girl gets a payoff of 5. The boy gets a slightly higher payoff because the boy is doing something that he prefers while the girl is going along even though she does not prefer it. On the other hand if both of them decide to watch a movie together then in this case the payoffs are reversed the boy gets a payoff of 5 and the girl gets a payoff of 10 because the girl is watching the movie which she prefers and the boy is going along. So, this is a slightly interesting and a colorful game of an interaction of a strategic interaction between the boy and the girl and of course, strategic interaction because by now you know this can be formulated as a game because the payoffs of each of them depend not only on what they are doing, but they also depend on what their partner or what their competitor or what their uh, what their partner prefers on doing right. And uh, these are the payoffs in this game that is the option the actions the possible actions are the boy chooses to either watch a game of cricket or the movie Harry Potter and the girl chooses to either watch the game of cricket or the movie that is Harry Potter. Let me just denote this by H. Uh, to use consistent notation. So, they each can choose between cricket or Harry Potter and their payoffs are as follows. And obviously, now one can again analyze this as before as we have analyzed several games before I can analyze this game using the best response dynamic. So, if the girl chooses to watch cricket the best response of the boy is of course, to watch cricket because if he chooses cricket he gets 10, if he chooses to watch the Harry Potter movie he gets 0. 
So, therefore, the best response of the boy is to watch cricket. On the other hand, if the girl chooses to go for the Harry Potter movie, then the best response of the boy is to again go for the movie, because if he chooses the movie that is Harry Potter, he gets 5, while if he chooses to go with the game of cricket, because he is not doing thing together with the girl, he gets 0. So, therefore, his best response is go is to go for H. Similarly, if the boy chooses cricket, then the best response of the girl is to go for cricket, because choosing cricket gives her a payoff of 5, while choosing the movie gives her a payoff of 0. And when the boy is choosing to go for the movie, that is Harry Potter, then obviously the best response of the girl is to go for the movie, because going for the movie gives us gives her a payoff of 10. And therefore, from this game you can see now, where the best responses intersect, there are again two boxes where the best responses intersect. So, I have two boxes for this game, where the best responses are indeed intersecting. And therefore, there are two Nash equilibria for this game. There are two Nash equilibria. So, this is a game again with multiple Nash equilibria. So, there are two Nash equilibria in this game. So, this is an example of uh, yet another game, because remember we also saw the coordination game in which there are two Nash equilibria. So, the coordination game is also an example of a game in which there are multiple Nash equilibria. This is also an example of a game with multiple Nash This is also another example of a game with multiple Nash equilibria. And what are the Nash equilibria? As we had seen, both the CC, that is where both of them are watching a game of cricket, or HH, where both of them are watching the Harry Potter movie, are Nash equilibria. So, the Nash equilibria are the NE of this game are where both of them are watching the game of cricket or both of them are watching the movie Harry Potter. So, this has multiple Nash equilibria, there are two Nash equilibria, where both of them are watching the game cricket, or where both of them are watching the movie that is Harry Potter. And the payoffs corresponding to these different Nash equilibria, now if you look at the payoffs corresponding to these different Nash equilibria, the payoffs corresponding to cricket are, well, 10 comma 5 and the chaos corresponding to both watching the Harry Potter movie are 5 comma 10. And now, you can see why both these Nash, even though this game has two different Nash equilibria, why this game is different compared to the game, compared to a coordination game, because these two different Nash equilibria are different in the sense that each prefers a different Nash equilibrium. For instance, the boy prefers a Nash equilibrium in which he is getting a higher payoff of 10, right. So, the boy prefers prefers this Nash equilibria of C comma C while the girl prefers the Nash equilibria of H comma Nash equilibrium of H comma H, since the girl is receiving a higher payoff of 10 in this Nash equilibrium compared to the other. And therefore, we have the boy prefers the C C equilibrium and the girl prefers the H H equilibrium. And therefore, this is not a coordination game, because remember 
in the coordination game everyone prefers one nash equilibrium versus the other because one of the nash equilibria gives a higher payoff for everyone however in the battle of sexes game the nash equilibrium cc gives a higher payoff for the boy so the boy prefers this nash equilibrium while the nash equilibrium hh gives a higher payoff for the girl and therefore the girl prefers the hh nash equilibrium therefore even though there are two nash equilibria this is not a coordination game therefore the battle of sexes hence therefore battle of sexes which i abbreviate of as bos bos is not a therefore the battle of sexes is not a coordination game because each of the players prefers a different nash even though it has multiple nash equilibria each of the players prefers a different nash equilibrium therefore this is not a coordination game so naturally now this is an interesting example where the where each prefers a different nash equilibrium so what do you see happen in practice in practice do you find that every time they are choosing one nash equilibrium versus the other no rather what you find is that several times they are compromising on choosing one action versus the other several times we find in practice that couples are compromising on either watching a game of cricket together or going out for a movie together so there is another compromise dynamic which can be a possible solution to the inherent competition to the inherent uh, ambiguity between these two nash equilibrium and that is therefore can be modeled and therefore there is another nash equilibria another nash equilibrium which is sort of a compromise nash equilibrium where each of them is choosing either a cricket to watch the game of cricket or to watch a movie with a certain frequency that is each of them is using a randomized or a mixed strategy and this will be introduced in another module when we talked about when we talk about mixed strategies so what we are saying is because each one prefers a different nash equilibrium this gives rise to a different dynamic where each one is compromising a certain set of times that is there is another compromise alternative where they are choosing between cricket and watching the harry potter movie with a certain frequency and this is going to be so in this game there is a third nash equilibrium hidden which is going to be explored in a future module so right now what we have seen is basically there are two nash equilibria in this game and each one prefers a different nash equilibrium what about pareto optimality let us look at pareto optimality what can we say about let what can we say about pareto optimality remember we defined pareto optimality as an outcome an outcome is pareto optimal if there is no other outcome where both the players can simultaneously improve their payoff now let's see if these outcomes if these nash equilibria are pareto optimal let us take a look at cc the cc outcome yields a payoff of 10,5 that is 10 to the boy and 5 to the girl if they both shift to h comma h then the boy's payoff is being reduced from 10 to 5 so therefore the boy is not improving his payoff if they go to c comma h then both receive a payoff of 0 comma 0 that is the payoff of both of them is decreasing and also if they go to h comma c then the payoff of both of them is decreasing to 0 to 0 therefore there is no other outcome where both the boy and the girl can simultaneously improve their payoff which means the Nash equilibrium C comma C is Pareto optimal right because there is no other outcome which simultaneously gives a higher payoff for both the boy and the girl therefore C comma C is is a Pareto optimal equilibrium what about H comma H look at this again h comma h if you go to c comma c then the payoff of the girl is decreasing from 10 to 5 and any other option such as c comma h or h comma c the payoff of both of them is decreasing to 0 comma 0 so there is no other outcome where the where both can simultaneously improve their payoff which means that h comma h 
is also a Pareto optimal H comma H is also a Pareto optimal equilibrium. Therefore, this is a very interesting game where you can see there are multiple Nash equilibria that is there are two Nash equilibria and each of them is Pareto optimal. This is unlike the prisoner's dilemma where there is only one Nash the equilibrium. Remember in the prisoner's dilemma there is only one Nash equilibrium it is not Pareto optimal. In the coordination game there are two Nash equilibria only one of them is Pareto optimal and in the battle of sexes there are two Nash equilibria and both of them are in fact Pareto optimal. So, the battle of sexes in B of B of S there are 2 N E and both of them and both of them are Pareto optimal. So, the battle of sexes uh, uh, which is an interesting or a colorful game between a couple is, is, is also interesting in terms of its behavior from a game theory perspective because it has multiple Nash equilibria and each player prefers a different Nash equilibrium and further both the Nash equilibria are Pareto optimal in the sense that uh, there exist no other outcomes where both can simultaneously improve their view. So, this is yet another important example for a kind of game uh, that can occur uh, in the context of game theory. So, we will end this module here and we will uh, consider other games in different modules. Thank you, thank you very much.